Hi, this is Victor Borges from DNVGL Software, and this video is about flaring operations in Maros. Um, so this is a continuation of the f the video on multi products and uh, production capacities, right? So if you refer back to that video, you're gonna get into the same stage we are now when it comes to this particular model, right? For those who just joined us uh, and want to start from here, so let me just give you a full. Uh, description of this model, right? So this model has uh, 10 years of system life. Uh, we are running 100 simulations, right? We have oil as our primary products with a uh, primary phase of liquids. We have water and gas. Failure data will be in years and repair data will be in hours, right? So when I press OK to this, right? Um, I can actually see my block flow diagram now. Uh, the block flow diagram has one well, uh, one production platform, one export system, water export, and the compression. I'm going to drag and drop the compression just slightly to the right here because we're going to need that. Um, so if we have a failure on the wells, we lose the full production. If you have a failure on the production platform, you have full production loss. Uh, if you have a failure in the oil export, full production loss. If you have failure in the water export, full production loss. and at the moment, if you have a failure on the compression, full production loss, right? Uh, but this model only has a reliability block diagram defined under the water export, right? So if I double click on that, you can see that we only have a two by 50% bump here, right? So what we need to do now, we need to define the reliability block diagram for the compression system, right? So I can double click on that I can add a system, right? I can call it, let's say, compression system. So compression, right? I can double click on that. And I'm gonna add a new equipment item here. I'm gonna fil use the filtering option to, add it, to look for compressors, right? I'm gonna add a compressor to that. And this is gonna be my compressor, yeah, so that's all I need. Uh, but let's say we also have a exchanger, right? Let's say we have an exchanger there. Press OK. Uh, let me hide this up again. I can then go to the equipment grid, right? So I can see all the failure remotes I have below my compression system, right? So I have the compressor. Let's assume the compressor is failing every year. So it's likely to fail every year. And the heat exchanger is likely to fail every two years, right? Uh, let's say it takes us uh, between 12 and 24 hours to fix the compressor, right? So I can go to uh, select my rectangular distribution and it's gonna say 12 hours for the compressor and minimum 20, 12 hours and maximum 24 hours. So what Mars is gonna do, Mars is gonna sample between 12 and 24 hours, right? Uh, let's say for the for the heat exchanger, it takes us 36 hours. All right, so this is our compression system, right? Uh, if I run this model now, what we should expect to see, we should expect to see some contribution from the water pumps and from the compression system. So let's run now. I'm going to save this model and run now. Yes. So these are the results. So we have a 99.4% uh, of efficiency, right? But look at now at the criticality graph, right? Criticality is showing compress, compression system being responsible for almost uh, for 74.1 percent of all the production loss we had. Right? Uh, if I click on this, uh, the compressor and the uh, exchanger is actually sharing almost half and half of uh, you know what we have, we what we are uh, losing here when it comes to production. Right? So. What can we do to actually mitigate this? You know, like uh, a lot of uh, um, companies around the world, they have a uh, they use flaring operations to to bypass failures in the compression system and keep producing from the oil system, right? Um, so so let's try to do that. Let's let, let's look into um, uh, adding some flaring operations here, right? So if I go back to my asset view and I move up to my reliability and move up to my block flow diagram level. I can actually look see uh, my gas compression here, right? So in order to define a flare, it's very easy, Maris, right? So what we need to do, we need to go to the catalog again, right? We're gonna fix this. I'm gonna scroll a bit to the right, right? So we can see this this line here. I'm gonna look for a flare node. So there you go, there's a flare node, right? So what I need to do, I need to drag this and drop on the line 
just before the compression, right? So how do I know I'm on the line? If I, uh, if I pass my mouse over the line, it becomes black. Hopefully you can see that, right? It becomes black, right? So now it's black, now it's not black. It's black, right? So uh, if you have a black line, it becomes a bit bold, right? So, so you can see that. So if I drop my, my flurry there, I need to have the same capacity at the moment. I need to have the same capacity of the compression system, right? When I press OK. And what the flare is going to do, any failure downstream to the flare is going to trigger the flare, right? So if there's a blockage here, the flare is going to be triggered, right? So let's run the model again and see what happens now. So I press run. Yes. And I'm going to run now. So let me just uh, auto hide this again. So these are the results, right? So we, we can see the efficiency went up. But look at the compression and criticality, zero now. So why is that? Because we are actually burning all the gas we can, right? So we are bypassing the failure completely, right? A every time we had a failure, we just bypass and burn the gas, right? So you can see there's a new report here, flurry operations. And you can see that the average duration of the flare is around uh, 40 hours, right? And the volume we are burning is around between is between 150 and 200 uh, um, millions of scarf, right? But there's no shutdown, obviously, because we haven't imposed we haven't imposed any limits to the flaring, right? So there's a zero shutdown occurrence, okay? Uh, obviously, we are all really really concerned about the environment, and we cannot burn as, as much gas as we want. There, there are like environmental limits, you know, all over the place that you know, forces us to, to shut down the flare. And there's also the structural integrity of the flare, right? So the flare can only be burning for a certain amount of hours. Otherwise, you know, the structure just melts down, right? So how do we define the flaring limits? I mean, we could go to settings, right? And we can say flaring limits here. And what we can do, we can add a new flaring limit. And we can say you have three options, right? Let's first put a description here. So say flaring limits. We have three options. We can set up a volumetric constraint. We can set up, set up a time constraint, and we can set up a potential percentage of potential volume constraint. Right. So let's say that we can only burn for twelve hours continuously. Right. So that's what we need to do. Um, and let's say we can only burn for uh, two hundred hours cumulatively in a month period. Right. Um, and this constraint is related to this flare. You can have multiple flares, right, in a single uh, model. So if you're modeling, for example, HP gas, LP gas, and IP gas, so different uh, gas streams, obviously uh, you might have different flare and you will have different limits. Uh, the limits will be bridged more easily. For example, obviously if you have HP uh, gas, it means that you have a higher rates of production. And if you have a volumetric constraint, the volumetric constraint is going to get, uh, is going to get uh, bridged much easily from the HP gas. All right, so there you go. That's defined. So what we need to do now, we need to rerun. So we go to the view and then run again. So these are the new results, and you can see now the compression is actually contributing to some losses. And the reason why the compression is contributing to some losses is because we uh, are now imposing some some shutdowns to the flare, you know, giving the, the the environmental constraints we define. If we move to the flaring operations report, we can see now that the loss production is is, is um, um, populated, right? Uh, the duration uh, is going to change as well because now we have bottlenecks, right? We are bottlenecking the way the amount of uh, gas we can burn, and you can see that we have an average of 1.4 shuts down per year, right? So, so, and on average it's taking uh, 18 hours per year as well, uh, with uh, 1.5 uh, operations per year, right? So obviously you might have more operations than shuts down shutdowns. So this this is the flaring operation in Maros, right? And obviously you can extend to include more flaring units and different limits. 
but if you have any questions, please do get in touch at software.support at dnvgl.com. Thank you very much.